Hi and welcome to tonight's version of uh, Ken O'Flynn here, we're actually Cork Live and tonight's version of Cork Live. I know we had the fantastic Brenda Dennehy last week but um, I've retired her and uh, I am the real Ken O'Flynn by the way as opposed to the imposter that was here last week. Um, yeah. Thank Ken, thank Ken. <laughs> We still, she's actually here since last week. I haven't gotten rid of her out of the studio. You know, she's like little gremlin inside here. I'm joined here tonight actually by a great cast, a uh, great crew, and some fantastic stories here for tonight. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to show you a little bit of aerial dance from Nikki's dance studio. And who am I joined with here first? Alex. Alex, you're going to go first, yeah? Yes. So you're going to show us what you can do, yeah? yeah? Okay, I'm impressed by this guy. Wow. Conversations go deeper than the ink from my tattoo. Let's break away, let's get away from all the hurt, from all the pain, just me and you. Wow, well, fair play to you guys, well done. So, what's your name? Sophie. Sophie, that was amazing. And this is aerial dance, isn't it? So, what actually happens with aerial dance? I've got to sit over here a second. Just come over here to me a second. Tell me about a little bit about this. When did you start doing this? Come over, look into the camera and we'll have a chat. Um, well, I didn't start it like, like yesterday. Only You've only just started that. Well, you look extremely professional and in fairness, you know. You're a bit like pink, you know, and, and uh, I see a lot of this aerial dance going on. And what about yourself? When did you start all this? Um, last year. Last year. Well, you're doing an amazing job, guys. Do you like the dance studio? Yeah. Yeah? So tell me a little bit, how long you've, you've been with the dance studio, just a short time? Mm -hmm. And how long? Go on, tell me. Uh, only like a couple of years. Only a couple of years. Only a couple of years, because you're so old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move this off the set. But tell me something there. Um, I'm joined here by uh, Emily and Nikki. I, yeah. I, which is which? I'm Nikki. You're Nikki, yeah. and this is Emily. And you have Nikki's dance studio, and that's yes. based where? In Donnybrook Mills in Douglas. Donny Brook Mills. Yeah. I've got to cross the camera, excuse me. So, tell, like, aerial dance is a huge thing now in Cork. Yes, me? it's very popular now. Um, we, my training is with anti gravity aerial yoga. So, from there, we're working a choreographic model of the, the pattern um, to endorse it for children, you know, uh -huh. exercise, mental health. Because there's, a, there's more to aerial dance than kind of a technique, isn't it? it it's, it's yoga. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So this program we teach is a fundamental program. So it incorporates the yoga, pilates, a little bit of cardio, acro skills, um, inverting, flying, all within 10 minutes of starting the class. All of within 10 minutes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So guys, do you find it very exciting? Like, did you think you were going to be allowed to climb all these um, ropes and, and uh, what do you call the, these? The Silks. Sil excuse me, silks. <laughs> uh, but did, did, you, did you know you were going to be claiming all these the first day you went into the class? Well, not really, but like, we knew that it was going to happen. It was going to happen, yeah, yeah. But it must be really exciting for the kids. They love it. How old are they when they, they start? They absolutely love it. We start them from six years upwards. Okay. Um, we do have a parent-toddler group as well from three to five years, but primarily the key is that they need to listen. So mm. from it's six different. years up, yeah, from yeah. six years up is, is kind of... Yeah, and there's, a, there's a safety element as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Because when you look at when you look at aerial dance, and I, it's popular because of the furt and crane in Cork, yes. because of the height yep. that they have in the ceiling. I think it's the one of the only places. It is, yes, a, in Ireland um, where you can do yeah, the aerial yeah, dance. Pretty yeah. much so, yeah. yeah. But um, it was usually popular in in France for years. It was. I remember Cirque seeing it in the Lido. Yeah. Back in the. And you have Cirque du Soleil as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even before Cirque du Soleil, yeah. they were doing it in the Lido. Yeah, yeah, but they were. Yeah, this is I'm showing how old I am now. <laughs> but it has really revived itself again. It has, yeah. Because, like, as I said, you were you were like pink, you know, at the start of her show, uh, and the, you know that all that sort of work, yeah, is coming is really reviving as it well, is. isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, and it's lovely and free, mm -hmm. you know. It's something very fly. different as well compared to your average fitness and dance. Uh -huh. yeah. And it is it's exercise as well. It yeah. it's not just about. Um, coming in and uh, ending up in a big tutu and disciplines and, and no. all this sort of stuff. It's, no. it's much more freeing and much more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Isn't absolutely. It? Yeah. 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 So how many people are enrolled in the, in the dance class? 
Oh, in the aerial class, we only take eight at, at any one okay. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in the dance class, we can take anything from 15 to 20. So if I head out to Nikki's dance studio, what do you expect? <coughs> Please do. We'd love you to. Oh, you, you um, believe me, you throw me out. <laughs> we'd love to hang you upside down. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> well, There's a lot of people who would like to hang me upside down. Maybe, <laughs> maybe my director here behind me. <laughs> uh, it depends what you'd like to sign up for, really. We have uh -huh. a varied program of classes. So. Okay, so you're talking from classic to modern, modern. disco and jazz. And, and, and Erica yeah. Silks. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that's a, a big, a big array. I think there's a very few. Mainly when you hear about mm. dance studios, it's either they're a ballet studio, or they're doing disco, or they're doing the Irish dancing, or, or something like that. But that's very varied. Yeah. I, I assume there's a lot of crossover between kids taking two or three different classes. There is actually. Yeah. 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 We have quite a few taking three or four a week at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. yeah. A lot of the kids we see that are very dedicated. You know, when it's coming back into the whole um, dedication is really coming back into didn't play again with children mm -hmm. and dancing and activities and stuff, yeah. I think, anyway. Uh, and Emily, how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching, well, mom, Nikki's mom. So the minute I was able to walk, oh, you, I was dancing. You were enrolled and you I were dancing. sure was, yeah. yeah. Like, I was just dancing from the minute I was born. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm teaching now about um, a year fully qualified. You, you were ill for a while, weren't you? you I were, was, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had sepsis for a while, but I'm teaching now for a while. You're ago. back now, stronger sure and better than ever. Yeah. With a vengeance. Better than yeah. ever. So, yeah. Well, that's so. not great, yeah. I'm fascinated by the, by the yoga and the silks and, the, and the, the whole lot. And I, I think somebody was saying to me earlier about stretching the spine. Yes. So when you're using the silks, yes. could you explain that to me? So, okay, so we lengthen the spine and we, um, you lengthen the spine at the beginning of the class so that your, your body is in perfect posture going forward. And it uh, promotes synovial fluid release from the brain and partial lymphatic drainage. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to nod and go, okay. <laughs> go on, tell me a little bit more about that now. Because okay, which, which part? You're talking about fluid to the brain and all this sort of okay, stuff. Okay, so the... I was told by my grandmother, never stand in your head, you put fluid to your brain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the happy endorphins, okay. so that's what you're releasing, you know. Right, okay. um, and then the lymphatic drainage, we all need lymphatic drainage. Um, so it's partial lymphatic drainage. So it's, it's all a, a good factor. Mm -hmm. And then you've grown by three quarters of an inch, but that lasts only for one week, clearly. <laughs> so you need to keep on going back to keep yeah, three quarters yeah, of an class, inch. Yeah, yeah, for class, yeah. I'm definitely, I'm signing up. Yeah. I'm definitely signing up. I, I intend to be seven foot by this time next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have to be hanging a long time on the suits. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, guys. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell me, so, lads, I, I, what, what other dances are you doing? The floss. The floss? Oh, yeah. Show me the floss. They're well able for the floss. Well, uh, come on, show me the floss before we go away. Yeah, Dawn is going to join you. You're going to teach Dawn the floss. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. You're going too fast for me. Okay. Okay, let's speed it up. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very impressed with you guys. I love what you're able to do. I think if we had a bigger height inside in the studio here, we'd be able to really it's see fab, what, yeah. what's, what stuff is like, you know. So when is, I do do an end of year show. Yes, we do. We're working uh, towards our awards night in November okay. at the moment. And then we're is looking... Is that going on in Douglas or...? That's going on in the Vienna Woods Hotel. Oh, very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. 25th of November. And then we're looking at um, our end of year show after Christmas. And we're, we're looking at Disney 2019 as well. Disney 2019. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen in Disney? You're going to go, so, all go to Disney, is it? Yeah. yeah. All right. So they do a performance for 20 minutes on the Fantasyland stage. Wow. Yeah. We've been twice wow. already, so this is our third visit. Oh, what a great experience oh, for children. Fabulous, you know, yeah. yeah. Like, I remember, when, you know, being in Montfort and things like that, you'd be gearing up saying, you know, you're, go you're going out and you're going to be on the Opera House stage. But imagine to say, at, how old are you? Eight. Eight and? Seven. Eight and seven. To be able to say, at eight and seven, I performed in Disneyland. Wow. It's fab. That is amazing. Yeah. What an amazing opportunity. Yeah. Well, uh, how many students? And how can we get in touch with you? Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. I think yep. Emily's all the social media side. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, we're pretty much on studio and all of it. And then you can you can roll down to the studio as well. You can go to Douglas yeah. as we well. We do advise pre-booking though, uh -huh. especially with the aerial silks because we yeah. are restricted with. Uh, and what's numbers. the age group that you start? You start with six, three years. Three years. Three years, old. three years old. Three years. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Three, three years, years to adult. adult. To adults. Yeah. yeah. So the, I'm, I'm welcome then, am I? You're very welcome. Yeah, okay. Anytime. Okay, yeah, because I'm just, I'm just 18. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much. I'm also joined in the studio today. Shut up, Dawn. <laughs> really, I'm going to get rid of her off this set. I'm, I'm joined by James Power, and I just want to go to yourself, James, and w welcome people on. You're the youngest professional boxer in Ireland. Yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah, so that was your first time professional boxing, was it? Yeah, that was my before debut. 
No, the, the, because we were talking earlier, you cannot professionally box in, in, Ireland. in Ireland. Yeah. And why is that? Uh, the legal age is 18. Okay. So I'll have to wait. So, well, you're uh, yeah. only a year away now before you start, yeah. before you start in that. But can, like, where did the love of boxing start? Um, I kind of, I was always in it. I started when I was young, I started when I was nine. Nine years old? Right? Yeah. And it was just because it was involved in the family. I right, just kind of okay. fell into it. But James, can I ask you, like, what's the difference now between being a professional boxer and being, because there's still boxing in clubs and, yeah. uh, at, at a, a non-professional level. Uh, and you see amateur boxing, yeah. So you still see a lot of people your age and younger amateur boxing yeah, in various clubs, through, and it's still very popular. Yeah. So why won't they allow you box? It's just As a rule. A that's, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, it's just a rule. And what's the big difference? Um, there's longer rounds, uh, okay. three minutes, and there's more rounds. Um, you can do fours, whereas in amateurs three. Mm -hmm. You can do six, eight, ten, twelve. Um, you have no high gears. So less protection and okay. the gloves are smaller. So that's the big difference. So the no, yeah. no headgear because yeah, the yeah, okay. yeah, and the gloves are smaller. So how old was the guy that you were fighting in Mexico? Uh, Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what are you? You're a lightweight. You're a featherweight. What yeah, I was fighting a lightweight over there, but um, I'll probably be super feather when I'm right. fighting in Ireland. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're getting. Is that the direction you're going to go? Uh, super feather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But is that is it professional boxing? Is that the, oh, is yeah, that the career yeah. for you? Yeah. Um. Yeah. We're exploring options. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough, fair enough. But you're still in school, are you? Yes, doing the leaving start this year. This year, all right. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about Mexico. What, what made you head out there first? Like, why did you say, okay, I'm, I'm not willing to wait till I'm 18? Um, I always wanted to turn pro, and I kind of always had in my head, okay, this is, like... And how did you find out even that you could, could you, you could do that? Um, well, we always kind of knew, but it was never an option that I was thinking of. And then Andrew O'Neill, who's a cut man in Ireland, uh, will be very good pals with me. Right, okay. He kind of just came up to it. He said, like, if you really want to go pro, why don't you just turn? And I kind of, they just clicked then. I said, sure, why not? So what happens now? Now, now that you've turned professional and you're, yeah. able to, you're able to box in just a few parts of Europe and yeah. in, in Central America. So you either have to travel there for the fights. Yeah. Uh, and then what happens? Can you still box here as an amateur? or, or No. Is that um, so okay. Yeah, I'm turned over now. Uh-huh. Yeah. You never thought about going back and training for the Olympics or anything like that? No, nah, it was never a, a goal. I you were after to go the money, aren't you? <laughs> you were after the big money that happens, yeah, is it? You were never in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's not much money. Yeah. Um, so where'd you, end up, where'd you end up in Mexico? Uh, Tijuana. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it was nice. So, though. nice? Yeah. Really? It was. Yeah. <laughs> really? Because you hear such nice, awful yeah. things about yeah. Tijuana. And that yeah. was kind of a, a worry when we were going over. Yeah. Um, what players going to be like, but... Who travelled with you? Uh, my coach, Declan Garty. Right, okay. Yeah. So just the two of you went just over? Just two of us flew yeah. over, yeah. The mammy had no problem with you? Yeah, she was grand. Jesus almighty, cool I think I'd be, I'd be first worried, <laughs> I think, with my young flag going out there. I, no, I, I know you have a challenger here tonight, and I yeah. know it's not. Um, I see her shadow it's boxing. Not, it's not normal boxing, but <laughs> I think you're going to train Dawn. She, she's like Rocky Balboa in the so, you know, she, she, she wants she wants to see, she wants to see what you can do, and she's going to and you're going to teach Dawn teach how me. to be a lethal. Um, I'm going to teach Dawn how to box. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm putting you on the spot now, right? Is is there hope for Dawn boxing? Oh, I, I, I don't. No. I don't. <laughs> you're going to tell us. You're going to tell us. Show me a move. Show Come me on, get up and give us. Your, show how us. Did you finish? The 24-year-old. You can knock her out. Your seat now. Oh, you're, you're tied in, are yeah, you? Yeah, that's oh, the no. Can't okay, do it now. You just have to do sit-down boxing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do it. All right, you're well, so fun. Let fun. me get my gum shield in. Patrick will do passage, yeah. He done a bit of boxing for a while. Yeah, he's tied to the chair, so he's afraid of me, basically. <laughs> afraid of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but seriously, you're... you're like, where, where to next now for you? Uh, Mexico. Next uh, Back to Mexico again. Yeah, flying out in Torza. Right, okay. Yeah. So how are you managing the, the leave insert in the... Um, You're not? No, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. The teachers are helping me out big time. Right, okay. So Where are you, where are you, where are you going to school? Where, you, where do you go to school? Uh, Coach College. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. you're just a... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. They're, they're a big shout out to Coach for College. Yeah. Fairness, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're all backing you and all supporting you. Yeah. Good man. That's a big help. Uh -huh. Well, look, I wish you the best to look. I really Thank do. You. I think, you know, you're, you're fair juice to you for going out there so young and doing it, you know, and having the confidence to go out and do it. I don't think I'd travel out to Mexico. Um, There's a big help when you have... Um, did you go to Mexico? Fighting? I said, she no. would I. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's the next thing. Well, maybe with the dance you would. Maybe with the dance, yeah, rather than the boxing. Now, Graham, I'm joined with Graham as well, our social media influencer and man about town, uh, Graham Craig. <laughs> you've, you've kind of exploded the internet in the last couple of months, haven't you? You've, in particular on, on, on Instagram. Yeah, just kind of took off and went on May and just kind of like started putting up general day-to-day -day things, nights out, weight loss. Yeah, because that's been a big thing for you. You're down a considerable amount of weight. Yeah, since over, I am a heaviest. I was 20 stone five and down to 12 stone now. So I, like, actually, a month ago, I was like a little bit lighter, but I kind of, after getting it a bit recently. Adjusting. Yeah, yeah. but uh, a week of lens already, you'll put weight on you. Well, so. <laughs> but, 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 like, but you're a tall man, like, you know, yeah. like, you, you can hold 20 stone, I'm sure, but um, that is a tremendous difference, though, like. It is. You've but like lost I, eight stone? Eight stone, no, I've like since I'm 19, I'm 24 now. Uh -huh. and, but like I never realised I was 20 stone, that was the thing. I went to like a weight loss, the programme that was on when I was living up in Belfast. And I suppose the consultant automatically saw me come in, she pounced on me. Um, she was like, come over here, have a weigh in. And she said 20 stone, five pounds. And I didn't know, I nearly dropped. And like, you don't think you're that big, because like when you're that big, you actually don't weigh yourself. It's only kind of when you... You're on a plan or you're trying to slim down, you're actually, you have a scales. So back then, like, I wouldn't have had a scales at all. Were you always chubby in school? Were you, yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, that, like, like yeah. done everything and could never lose the weight. Always got a quick fix for a while. Then, like, quick fixes just didn't work. Like, I worked for, like, six months and then went back to what I was plus some. So, like, that's how, they, like, like, when you think 20 stone, like, it was, like, that's how it got to that because... But what, like, what was it from, eating rubbish or just... Or? Um, yeah, eating rubbish and then just, just probably... Not mindset kind of helps as well and so I suppose the older you get you kind of learn and you come into the person that you're meant to be mm. so that kind of helped as well when I was true and honest with the person I'm meant to be that kind of lost weight in itself so that mm. kind of took a stone or two off so yeah but like 20 19 years old you said yeah 20 stone five 19 pounds. years old 20 stone living in Belfast and take and five years later you're down eight stone like that's yeah. a whole person yeah you're like yeah, Emily, you're probably what six and a half, seven stone or something, are you? Yeah, I think I'm seven. <laughs> 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 oh, but you know what? You know what? You're a size six, for God's sake! Right? You know you're the perfect shape. Go ahead with that. But like that's your entire body weight. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, that, I can't believe that you actually carry that weight because you really don't look like you carried. Yeah. That, that amount. Of weight. I have like, and it's the one thing if I had a known back then when I was eating all that food, like the last, like you don't realize like the damage it's doing to your body. Like, so, like, even though I might look like I carried that weight, like, the, the damage is there that I carried it. Like, you yeah. get left with stretch marks, like, you know, you get, like, you've saggy skin, loose skin from it. So, like, by all means, if I had known back then when I was eating the food that I was, that it was going to lead to that. Mm -hmm. Especially the older you get, like, you can just, you're doing nights out and you're doing things, you kind of, you, you don't think it out when you're young and yeah. you're going to the sweet shop and you're getting your big bags of jellies and... Everything don't, and don't talk, to, don't talk to me. I have a plan later on today that involves a bag of chips. <laughs> so, yeah, all the hot chicken rolls can add it up after a while, and yeah. the wages and but the chipper. But did you start on one of these kind of? You, you said you went to a kind of a, a weight. I did them all over the years, and like they kind of when you're kind of big, they come to you as well. So like I kind of like went in. I was actually went to my friend's one that night, and that's how I actually realised I was, was the weight I was, and then so they, you went to a. Just the weight loss one, yeah, that was whatever, that. Yeah. I was only actually meeting a friend there, and then uh -huh. they came running over to me saying, "Oh, hi, you could do with losing weight." So, <laughs> thanks went, very much. Yeah, 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 get on the scales there, and then they tried to send me a plan straight away. They were like mm -hmm. a monthly direct debit, two hundred pounds a month. I just didn't do it, and then I kind of did gradual things myself. I went from twenty stone to seventeen stone. I was always seventeen stone for like a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then it took me a good while to go from seventeen to fourteen. And then that was always grand. I was kind of always content with being that. And then got in a relationship then. And then she was doing all the cozy nights in, you're getting takeaway and you're getting everything back up to 17. So, and then I was like, shit, what am I going to do now? And then literally they always say, you can't start a diet on a, don't start a diet on the weekend, start on a Monday. And I woke up on Sunday morning. I was like, this is it, has to change. And I kind of just researched. For me, it was all about like ways of cooking food. But did you do the, the herbal life, the, no. the Cambridge, and, and all like, these? No. Have, have you done those in the past? I've done know? them in the past and they've yeah. been ex like, say, I you know, gyms. Do you, do you no, do, no. no. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, no, no, no. I'm no, still no. paying a gym membership for the last <laughs> five years and they ring me every every two months. Yeah, yeah, actually, I was just really busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? No, like, for me, I did too. Like, I think if I was the way, if I was that way again and I was under pressure that I had, like, someone asked me to be, like, a groomsman in six months' time, they're great. Take the shakes, three a day. You lose the weight, really good. But, like, if you're 20 something you can't live having three shakes a day because like you've social things like your friends are going to say go to the cinema um so you're eating food there mm -hmm. like them shakes aren't everyday life they're great for like a fixed period of time to lose the weight so graham can i ask you what did you actually do um so like, we're throwing out all the plans yeah, we're throwing so like out all the, the so like watches, the slimming worlds all these forget about all if these it comes from the ground or it comes from a plant or an animal I like trying to like just really keep it to that like white meats, chicken, fish. Never like I kind of came off red meat, and I was never. I was always big into red meat, uh, the processed stuff like rashers, sashes, all that kind of stuff naturally. So no, nothing processed. Not processed. Okay, so you cook no. all you cook and all the for yourself. Uh, like and that's the biggest thing about it to be kind of dedicated to it is the preparation. Um, mm. Like so, you have to do your food shop. You have to make sure everything's there. You have to kind of make sure the healthy stuff is there for when you get up in the morning for your lunch, your dinner, or you are gonna be tempted and taken off track. Yeah, but you're you're doing all that and and no sauces, no. So it's boring. Like, imp like is it was at the start because right, your body's addicted to salt and sugar. It's like for the first month that I w went about this, like I was probably a demon to live with because like you're getting sweats, you're getting everything like your body. Oh, really? Like it's it's kind of in some ways like you're kind of like it's some like a, like a li small bit of a drug addiction because you've all the salts, your sugars, your body's are used to, and you wake up for like a period of time and your body wants all that kind of stuff and you're like you're not giving it to you, you're giving it a healthier substitute version mm -hmm. of it. And your body needs to get used to that. I'm going to ask you one quick question. Yeah. There are plenty of people out there on Instagram, and I know you have a tremendous amount of followers. Yeah. But there are people out there on Instagram at the moment, in Cork, in Dublin, yeah. in London, and they're showing off these big buff photographs yeah. of these ultra slim ladies with bodies that are totally yeah. enhanced and the whole lot. And then they're charging people 200 quid a month to sing, do 20 push-ups and yeah. be like me. And, and that doesn't work either. No, no. And I'm, I yeah. kind of, I'm very anti that. Um, so I've, like, I do get messages like a lot uh like these protein bars these types of protein if you say that you use these we give you so much if you sell them you'll get 30 percent commission on everything and you don't do any of that no it's not me and i think if Come i in. did that my friends would kind of like be like that's not me. everyone knows i've been honest since i've done this plan um the last year it's like it's taken a year mm. hasn't been a quick fix and i think everyone Are you getting married when in april next, yeah ne no august next year august next year what yeah. date 10th of August. 10th of August. I'm available. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to actually going to that wedding now, in fairness. Thanks, yeah. for, my, thanks for the invitation. You, we might as well all come along. We might as well all go now, sure, you know. You can <laughs> perform. You can actually, perform that'd be very cool. Yeah, you can perform at the wedding. I kept the last, no offence to anybody, but I kept the last little bit to, to, be, to best, right? Because I have a most fascinating young man here, and his name is Brandon. Brandon, what's your surname? Uh, Bolger. Bollinger. Bulger. Oh, Bulger, excuse me. I thought yeah. you were named after the champagne. Can we get Brandon here? We can. Can we see him? We can. I'll push back his mom. But because you have a fascinating story to tell us, because you were in Crumlin Hospital not so long ago with uh, getting an operation on your foot, wasn't it? Yes. So go on, tell us. You went to, now you, you're, you're well known in Crumlin because you've been gone since you were four years old. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, you were very shy. You're very shy <laughs> now. Yeah, you're very shy. You were telling me all about this outside. Come on. Yeah. So tell me all about it. Well, I. Uh, um, Where did we start? You I, suffer from yeah, asthma. Yeah. Yeah, and then to about a year ago, maybe I'm this year. Not quite sure, uh -huh. but I uh, got cancer. Mhm. Mm and. So you were spending a lot of time up in the in Crumlin, yeah. then, weren't you? Well, I was before as well, going up with, with asthma. asthma. Yeah. So it's been a tough old time, actually, for yeah. you, you know? And you notice one thing that Crumlin Hospital has, but it doesn't really have. And you were very bored in the weekends there. Yeah. Because a lot of the time... There's nothing to do. And that's being honest with you. If you went out into a cornfield today and sat in it for 24 hours, you would have more fun and more crack than you would in Crumlin Hospital on the weekends. And why is that? Because there's no one there, uh, any of the ties there, they're all broke, they're, uh, there's nothing there. There's nothing there to do, and anything that's, even the games and the, the things, the controllers well, are the missing. Well, the controllers are missing, the Xboxes and stuff, the controllers don't have batteries in them. 
Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a boring place to be, and most people are gone home and things like that as well, isn't it? Yeah, on the weekends, there's no one there. There's two place specialists there during the week. One mm -hmm. girl, she, you can tell by even just looking at her, she has no interest being there at all. <laughs> Right, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Actually, come here, we'll get you on today tonight, actually, instead of <laughs> instead of Cork Live TV. But you decided to do something about this, didn't you? Yeah, well, I was in Crumlin one day and I was in the transplant unit because uh, I had no beds on the normal ward, but okay. I didn't have to get a transplant unit. I was just in you getting chemo. You were just stuck chemo. inside there, okay. Yeah, but I could, there, and they wouldn't let my brother in to see me, so... So then if so you were really bored yeah so then if the four of us wanted to be together we'd have to go down to the playroom okay so then i came up with an idea to buy a tractor and a trailer and like go around to shows and stuff and to raise money to buy stuff and pay for magic shows for the kids up in crumlin but what I want, like, for a magic show, I don't mean, like, someone just comes in and goes to the playroom. No, just say if Johnny or Mick, whoever, was sick in the room and they couldn't come out to the magician or mm -hmm. whoever. So the magician will go yeah. around the wards? Oh, nice. Yeah, so he, he comes in to just say Johnny's room there and spends mm -hmm. a few minutes with him, then goes to uh, Sarah's room there next, and then so on, so on. Good stuff. So what did you, you decided to go off and get a tractor? Yeah. And you ordered yourself a Zetter? A Zetter, 6211. Now, I know you showed me photographs, and we're going to put up photographs underneath the, the, this later. But you, showed, you bought a, a Zetter 6211, and it was... It was in rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah, when you, if you saw it at first, you would say, there's no way that's going to be fixed. Mm -hmm. you, you would have said, if you saw it, why are you buying that piece mm -hmm. of scrap? So you bought this piece of scrap, and you said, I'm going to have this restored, yep. and I'm going to take it around from tractor, from tractor festival to fields to village fairs to everything that's going and giving Cat, a pe give everything and everything, anything cattle marts the whole lot go around with this and say lads you have a chance there to put the kids on the tractor and see the tractor and it's now got bluetooth and speakers hasn't it yeah and it's painted a bright yellow well it's painted jcb yellow jcb yellow and that's what you selected because yeah it's gold and black are the children's cancer yeah, colors but, uh, we painted it yellow and black well the mechanics did mm -hmm. but if you put gold onto a tractor it's 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 not gold it's goldy silverish mm -hmm. it doesn't shine enough it just it's yeah. not nice. So you got this fantastic tractor, which is all done up now, and it's up in yep. it's up in Offaly at the moment. Well, it's still at the mechanics because mm -hmm. there, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I've been in the hospital and mm -hmm. stuff. And, and you have to come out and test drive it now, don't you? Well, she's all right, and she's meant to be coming home sometime this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once she comes home, you're then going to go to every festival, every fair, every anything that's on, anything that's on, anything that's on well, at all I'm that you can raise money. Yeah, I'm invited to the Christmas tractors, and I'm not sure where it is now. It on the tip me tongue, but I forget where it that's is. All right, okay, yeah. And then but you're um, based out of Carlo, but you'll you'll travel all of Ireland, will you? If I have mm -hmm. to. I'll go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do with this money, you're going to collect this money and you're going to buy the toys and pay for mu uh, magicians Mag yeah. and for other entertainers to come in to Crumlin Hospital to visit sick, ch sick children and, and, and some of your friends that are up in Crumlin at the moment and visit people that are in Crumlin and entertain them on the weekends when they're stuck inside. Yeah. There, yeah? I the, think that's a bloody brilliant idea. all the toys up there, there, there is toys up there. But, mm -hmm. but they need to be renewed. Yeah, but they're all broken. There's pieces missing off them and everything. Right, fair enough. So that needs to be restocked. Yeah. And that's what you're going out to do. You're going out yeah. to restock it. Well, fair play to you, Brendan. I think you're a brilliant young fellow. I really do. And I'm very proud of you. And you've gotten lots of support from people in Carlo and Kilkenny, in Offaly, in Galway. England and the whole lot. And, everywhere. and somebody put, uh, put together a page for you, didn't they? Uh, uh, to raise money for well, this. Well, yeah. 
That was to raise money for doing up the tractor, was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, so getting now, the tractor. So they did a, a fund me page, was yeah, it? Yeah, a GoFundMe. Right, okay. So now you're going to go and fund f and you're going to raise money for Crumlin Hospital. Yeah. Directly. So this money that everything, every penny that goes into your bucket is going to be spent on toys and entertainment for children in Crumlin yeah. Hospital. How can we help you? Well, I'm planning on trying to get onto the Late Late Toy Show. Right, okay, so you want to promote this on the late late? Yeah. Yeah, so this show isn't good enough for you, right? Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, fair enough. No. But actually, I do know, <laughs> I do know Ryan Tupperty, so I will send him a text later on for you. Right, because I think you're a great, I think you're a great young man, and I really think your story needs to be told because what you're doing is a, is amazing, and what what you're doing is so is so giving to other people. I yeah, think that's absolutely brilliant. This is the thing: when kids first go up to Crumlin to get their cancer treatment, they think it's going to be it's going to be the worst days of your life but mm -hmm. at the end it turns out to be great because i'm there's a thing that um there's a thing uh i oh, make a wish and oh, yeah. uh, you get to like just say you want to go to disneyland or wherever you write it down on a piece of paper and they'll ask you and you give that to them and i'm going to disneyland florida now after christmas I tough am. old life isn't it <laughs> tough old life so you're going to disneyland florida yeah wow fantastic fantastic are you bringing the tractor no, probably not. not. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Probably not. Fair enough. Come here. I must ask you another question because I heard you're looking for a woman. Yeah. So you came down. You came down from Carlo to Cork to suss out the Cork talent, is it? No. So, but what are you really looking for? A northern woman. A northern say. woman. Yeah. What's wrong with the southern women? No, because they're not able to drive. And then, if you're drive. out late farming, if you're out late farming or lorry driving, they'll well, be given out to get home. We have dance schools down in Cork. Do you teach driving? Yeah, yeah, we could. There you go. We, we could teach somebody, a cock girl, for, to drive for you, you know? No, but it's northern <laughs> women, is it? Yeah. But is there another reason? Is there another reason? If they have land, or the father has land, but, but there's a catch. Make sure she has no brothers, because then they're probably going to get the land. But if she's just a lonely child, well, then I will get... I'm. You're, you're, I'm, you're going to get plenty of road I'm frontage. definitely okay. going to get a bit so, of land. All I, what I have to say today is, Brandon is looking for a woman, preferably <laughs> northern. Lot of milk quota? Land. 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 Road money. frontage? Money. Money. Old money. Old money. Right. <laughs> yeah. Has to be able to jive. Do we care what she looks like? Yeah. All right, okay. All right, okay. <laughs> has to be. Has to be pretty? Yeah. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Pretty. And fairly good with her hands as well. And a good farming lady. Yes, yes, has to definitely. Be good far so we're calling all farm, uh, farm rats. I don't know what you call a lady farmer. <laughs> we're calling all the lady farmers out there. If you're interested in meeting a young man here from Carlo who who will drive his Zetter, you've driven the Zetter. You've driven your daddy's uh, tractor, haven't you? Well, we used only around to have, the field. We used to have it massy, and I used to drive that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you like the John Deere? No. Oh uh, well, yeah. Fear the beer. Yeah, I I model the tractors at home, and if you went up to my room, you wouldn't get into it because it's that packed with. Oh stuff. Jesus! I'd say now when the farmer's wife, I'd say when you're when you when you find yourself a nice little lady farmer, she'll clear out that room very quick for you. <laughs> Listen, there's a there's a GoFundMe page that we're going to support. We're going to put a link underneath here today as well on the, on the show. Isn't that right, Patrick? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and it's there. It's there. And we're going to try and help you as much as possible here in Cork. I know people in Cork have been quite good in helping with the GoFundMe page. And I hope to see you down here in Cork at every event with the Massey Ferguson or the Zetter. Well, the Zetter. The Zetter. The, the, lemon, and, the lemon or gold. No, it's yellow. JCP, JCP yellow. yellow. JCP yellow Zetter, uh, Zetter tractor down here in Cork. I'll, I'll tell you what you can do so you don't right. forget. Just get a pen right there on your hand. That, well, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, shouldn't have done that you before. You should have done that. I should actually, in fairness. Come here, you're a brilliant young fellow. I have to say, best of luck to you, and I hope you raise loads and loads of money. And I know people in Ireland and people in Cork are really good at donating, especially to Crumlin, especially to Crumlin. But what a great idea, what a fantastic idea. That's all the time I have for tonight. It's been an absolute blast, as always. I want to thank our, our guest, uh, James Power, great... Um, Graham Craig, isn't that a very, very fancy name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm convinced it's a stage now. I think he's going to, after the, uh, after the internet sensation, he's going to launch an album. Emily and Nikki uh, from Nikki's Dance Studio. 
fantastic work. I'm delighted to see aerial dance being used in the city, especially when we're the home of it here with the Ferton Crane. And I think our two little stars here. Now, they're another two that could be on the late, late with you, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah they'd be all right, wouldn't they? Yeah, on the back of the tractor, yeah. And no, no, go on. I, I have two spotlights on it. Hopefully, oh, we sure, sure. We can put the spots. We can have them hanging off the spots. So oh. listen, and the call is out there as well. By the way, you know to like, share, and love in Cork Life TV. And of course, O'Donovan's Off License, a great friend of the show. I have tickets to give away for O'Donovan's Off License. It's their 16th wine fair. Anyone who has been to their wine and craft beer fair will know it is an absolutely amazing night. Not only do you pick up bargains there, they give you lots of free samples. And I, uh, I, I always end up in the taxi home actually out of the place. But it is great fun. And there is chocolatiers, there is uh, cheesemongers, there is uh, various wines as well coming in all the time. Um, well worth uh, So it's like, share, love, Cork Live TV. That's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Like a fishmonger.